All right, let's talk about siblings. All right, make sure to stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to cover some ways to help deal with sibilance and something that can be tricking you into thinking that you have sibilance or into thinking that you have really bad sibilance when maybe either you don't have it or you just don't have it as bad as you thought you did. But before we get into all of that, first things first, what is sibilance? Well, it's just a harsh S sound. It can be a whistling S like sibilance, or it can just be a harsh S like sibilance. Some people have more sibilance than others, and it can be a really debilitating problem for some people. Brighter microphones can make sibilance much worse. For example, the Sennheiser 416 is known to really enhance sibilance, which means certain people should probably stay away from that microphone, and a lot of people do because of that reason exactly. So what can you do to make sure sibilance isn't causing issues with your final audio? Well, I'm going to break this video up into two parts. Part one will focus on voice actors, while part two will be for content creators creators like YouTubers, podcasters, live streamers, and so on. Content creators and voice actors won't look at sibilance the same way for a few reasons we'll get into here in a second. I'll also show you two of my favorite ways to help reduce sibilance inside Adobe Audition, and while one of these methods can only be done inside Adobe Audition, the other method I'll show you can be done inside whatever DAW you have. Okay, voice actors, should you be worried about your sibilance? Short answer? Not really, but there are times where it can be a problem and you should worry about it. But before I talk about when you should actually worry about it, let me first talk about why it's not as big of a deal as you might have been led to believe it is. In voiceover, you record your audio and then send it off. Well, in most cases, you're sending your audio off to an audio engineer who's been hired by the client to make your audio sound a specific way. Because of this, you're really not supposed to add any processing to your audio because the engineer on the other end that you're sending your audio off to can't undo anything that you you do to your audio which ties their hands and that's not good for them. They need to make that audio sound the exact way the client wants them to and if you do any processing they can't undo it meaning they likely can't make the audio sound like the client wants them to because you've already made it sound a specific way. In short, you really don't need to worry about your sibilance because the engineer on the other end will take care of it for you because that's their job. You just need to make sure you worry about making sure your space is properly acoustically treated, soundproofed, and that you have good levels and good microphone technique and things like that. Basically, things that you can take care of before you even begin recording. Now, all that I just said is true in most cases. However, there are some times when you do need to worry about your sibilance as a voice actor. Now, as an instructor and engineer, I've heard and hear people's audio day in and day out. Most people that think they have a sibilance issue really don't have one, as in it's nowhere near as bad as they think it is. And as rare as it may be to find someone who really needs to get their sibilance in check, it can happen. Boy, can it happen. But out of the thousands of people that I've heard over the years, I've only known and met two people that really needed to worry about their sibilance. And oddly enough, those are the two people who don't do anything to fix it or make it better for all of the engineers that have to deal with said sibilance. I've met so many students who lose sleep every night over their sibilance when really they had nothing to worry about. And these two people who really, really need to worry about their sibilance just pretend like it's not a thing. It was really, really strange. And just to drive home how critical of a problem this can be if your sibilance is this bad. I've met multiple people who also know the people I'm talking about that told me they can't listen to these people's podcasts, watch their videos, consume any of their content because their sibilance is so bad that it just hurts to listen to. This is exactly when you need to worry about your sibilance. If you create content for YouTube, have a podcast, or just something like that, you really need to make sure that you have this under control so people will actually listen to or watch your content. Now, more on that in just a second, but as a voice actor, if your sibilance is that bad, as bad as these two people, you're likely losing out on jobs and don't even realize it. I know this from personal experience by having to deal with audio like this for a couple of years straight, but what can happen is an engineer will actually tell the client, agent, or really whoever they can that they don't want to work with said person if there's another talent to choose from because they don't want to wrestle with that person's audio anymore because their sibilance is that bad. They have deadlines and they need to meet those deadlines quickly. They don't have time to wrestle with really bad audio. The craziest part is you can actually go to a speech therapist and have your sibilance taken care of and worked out of your speech. Now, you might be asking yourself, James, how bad is that bad? Well, if when you speak, this is happening, sometimes people whistle when they speak. <laughs> now, 
Unfortunately, that's the best example I can give, but it's not exactly like that. I mean, one of those two people definitely had a whistle like that, but the other is kind of a whistle, but just more of a really sharp S that actually made it sound like the audio was clipping, causing digital distortion. Not even kidding. It almost sounds crunchy. It really, really hurts to listen to. If your sibilance is that bad, you should get it trained out of your speech. But remember, this is really, really rare, so you're probably just fine. Your headphones can cause you to think that you have have sibilance or maybe that you just have much worse sibilance than you do? More on that in a bit. But first, let's now talk about content creators. If you know me or watch my channel, you'll know that I always say for long-form content like YouTube videos, podcasts, or anything like that where the listener will be listening for a decent amount of time, you should always aim for your audio to be on the darker side. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there that have really bright audio that's kind of been a trend for a little while. They load up the audio with a ton of boost with an EQ to really make their audio sizzle, and that's fine, all right, because we all have our own personal preference, but it's my personal preference to ensure the audio on my channel is on the darker side so it's easier for my viewers to digest my longer videos without causing ear fatigue and discomfort while they're watching and listening. The only exception to that rule for my channel is microphone reviews. When I review a microphone, I do absolutely nothing to the audio other than boost the levels a bit for YouTube loudness standards. That's it. In my talking head videos like this one right here, I try to ensure that the audio is really easy to listen to and one of the few ways that I do that is by getting rid of any sibilance via DSing. Speaking of DSing, I'll now cover two ways to go about it. I have other methods that I use that you can find out in my Audio for Content Creators course over on my website under courses, but these two methods are really, really solid and I use them all the time. All right, so let's cover the two ways that I like to deal with sibilance. I'm going to start with the one that you can only do in Adobe Audition, and then the second one you can do in whatever DAW you have. So here in Adobe Audition right here, I have a file that is me making myself have really, really bad sibilance. I don't really have much of a sibilance problem, so I had to go overboard here. Also, I like to give extreme examples to explain things. It makes it much more easy for people to grasp. And so for this example, I kind of made myself sound like Herbert the Pervert to really give myself a whistle. So, let's first off, let's just play through this audio so you can hear what it sounds like. Sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Let's say things that start with an S and end with an S that's sibilant. Okay, <laughs> obviously that's really ridiculous. And, you know, in, in most cases, um, in the vast majority of cases, it, sibilance is not going to be this bad, but like I said, it's really good in extreme examples to explain what I'm doing here. So, like I said, very extreme examples. So the first thing I'm going to do, the first way I'm going to uh, solve this is I'm actually going to pull up this spectral frequency display here that's in Adobe Audition. Now, like I said, it's native to Audition, so unless you're using Audition, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, but this is basically an EQ turned over on its side. So all of this down here is your low end. Everything in between those are your mid frequencies and all this up here are your high frequencies and that wasn't quite perfect but basically it goes low to high okay the brighter the color like that means the louder the audio the darker the color like that means the quieter the audio so here there is virtually almost nothing audible happening as you can see because it's very dark now this sibilance is so incredibly bad that i can literally just look at this and tell where the sibilance lives now if you want to get really really precise the sibilance is that right there, okay? Now, the rest of the stuff up here is still sibilance in a way. I mean, it's still a harsh S, right? But this is a very particular band of frequencies because I'm whistling as I speak. And so because I'm whistling, this is obviously the worst part of the sibilance here. So in, in most cases, when it's not this bad, when it's just regular sibilance, you might would want to highlight all of that, okay? But in this instance, because this is so incredibly bad, I'm just gonna highlight that really, really harsh bit right there, okay? So what you wanna do is pull up the de that comes with Adobe Audition. Okay, you have the de here, all right? And all you're gonna do is find a place where you have sibilance, which for us is very easy to tell. You can see it there, you can see it there, 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 and so on. So I'm just gonna take this place right here because that, that's, that's pretty bad, that's, that's pretty awful. And I'm gonna make sure down here, this is set to loop, which if you have this highlighted on blue, that means it's gonna loop over and over what you've highlighted here. So I've highlighted the sibilance and I'm literally just gonna hit play and let it loop. 
And I found sometimes you have to play it once, stop it, and play it again for it to just show the sibilance and only the sibilance. As you can see, the first time I played it, it was showing everything. But as you can see, me looping that is showing exactly where that sibilance problem lies, which is right there, okay? So I'm already on it by default when I pulled this up, and that's not always gonna happen. But all you now have to do is, with this set to multiband, all you have to do is, I don't like to take the threshold here is how aggressive the de is gonna go after that S and how much it's gonna try and take away. This is just how much you're gonna take away here. So I don't really like to go past negative 40 because again, you don't wanna go extreme here to make yourself, because you'll end up sounding like you have a lisp. You don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna take it down to 40. I'm gonna just change these parameters slightly just to make sure I'm really tight on just that sibilance, just that really harsh frequency right there, which I am, okay? Because I don't wanna do this and, and take up all these high frequencies in there that are over here and over here, because that's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to be very narrow here, like a magnifying glass. I'm looking to zero in on that sibilant, on the sibilance, on the frequencies that this is taken up, which is right there, okay? And now I'm gonna hit play and let it loop and you're gonna see how much is taken away. That's taking quite a bit away. Now, if I turn this off, you'll hear the difference because you're probably thinking like, well, I still hear the sibilance, but watch this, okay? You see how much that's taking away? And in most cases, you don't want it to take away too much because then it's gonna make the audio sound muffled and maybe you sound like you have a lisp. You don't wanna go too far here. Like I said, though, this is an extreme example, so it's leaving a lot in that maybe wouldn't be in most cases. But you can see how much is taken away here. So now all I would do, so I would take that away, back out, and now, sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Now I'm gonna take it off. Sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Put it back on. Sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. You see how much easier that is to listen to now? I mean, yeah, you still hear the sibilance, but it's nowhere near as ear piercing as it one, once was, as it was before. So I would just hit apply. And then bang, I mean, look, you can already tell just by hitting apply how much that took away. I mean, look, I undid it. Look at, look at that crazy one right there, right? And then I redo it. And look, it just took that stuff away so much. Sibilance, sibilance. It is nowhere near as bad as it was before. So that's method one. Unfortunately, you can only do this in Adobe Audition, but let's go back. Let's undo what I've done here. And now let's do the second method that you can do inside any DAW. And as a matter of fact, it's with an EQ, a parametric equalizer. And I'm actually gonna use a free EQ called Tokyo Dawn Labs TDR Nova. This is the EQ I like to teach people on just simply because one, it's free. And it's amazing that this EQ is free because this EQ does a ton of stuff, but you can take it with you in any DAW that you use. So I like to teach people on this EQ because this operates much like a very standard parametric EQ. You just get a few extra bells and whistles. And I like to teach people on this because if you go into any other DAW with an EQ, it's gonna function just like this one, but you can also take this one with you if you want. So it's just a really good one to learn on. Now, first things first, I like to set this to in because if this is off and I play this audio, sibilance, you can't see anything happening. But if I put this on in, watch this. Sibilance, sibilance. You can all of a sudden see all the frequencies across the spectrum and, and you need to be able to see this in a lot of cases. So boom, now you can see the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this EQ gain off. I'm gonna turn that off. That's trying to compensate for changes you're making, but I want to hear the changes I'm making and not have them altered in any way. So I'm gonna turn that off. And now what I'm about to do is what's called sweeping the frequencies. Engineers use this constantly. So I'm gonna take this away real quick. And if this wasn't such an extreme example, I would definitely need to sweep the frequencies back and forth to try to find exactly where the sibilance lives. Now, most sibilance lives between around 4K and 10K, all right? And, and everybody's different. So it can be vastly from one end to the other. The two people I've spoke about in the video that have like horrendous sibilance, one of them lives around 4K, the other lives around 10K and unfortunately multiple other places. The second person has sibilance in like three or four different places, which makes it very difficult. But the first person has it live around, it lives around 4K, right? So all I'm saying is it can be vastly different for everybody. It can live between four and 10K, which is quite a range. But what you would do is you would sweep the frequencies. Now, this sibilance is so incredibly bad that we don't even need to sweep the frequencies to find it because if I hit play with an EQ, sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Let's say things start. 
It's very obvious where that sibilance lives. I'm not going to say yet if you don't know, but it's incredibly obvious just by looking at this EQ um, where the sibilance lies. But let's just pretend like I have no idea because in most cases you won't. You'll have to sweep the frequency. So here's how we do this. I'm going to turn off each one of these points, okay? And if you don't quite understand EQ, you can learn a ton about EQ in my Audio for Content Creators course over on my website under Courses. But all you have to know here is we have points because we can adjust all of these points individually if we need to make more than one adjustments. But let's just turn every point off except for this third one, okay? And we're just going to leave this one alone. We're going to let it be the only one here so that everything's really clean and easy to see. And what we're going to do here, this is how I explain it in all my classes. What I like to do or how I like to explain this is imagine you're a photographer and you're about to shoot a wedding and the bride and groom come up to you the day of the wedding and they say, oh my God, you know, we got really nervous before this wedding and we both broke out and we both have pimples on our face. Uh, is there any way you can take these out in Photoshop uh, after, you know, once the wedding's over and everything? Well, as a photographer, you say, yes, Yes, absolutely I can. Um, and you wouldn't just airbrush their face or like, you know, you know, do, use their entire face and just brush it and try and get away, get rid of the, the pimple. You would zoom in really far into their face and only take away that pimple and zoom back out and no one would ever know what you've done. That's essentially what we're doing here. We're going to create a magnifying glass by pulling a point really far up. We're going to take the cue and narrow it really, really far. We're going to narrow that thing really far, as far as it'll go, because we're only trying to attenuate a very slender amount of frequencies. We're not trying to take a bunch of high end frequencies away, just this whistle, okay? Now, then we're gonna take the frequency up to 4,000, okay? So right there, okay? And we're gonna literally sweep between 4K and 10K because that's where most people's sibilance lives. So I will literally just hit play, let this um, basically cycle over and over until I hit the frequency that I'm looking for. Now, beware. Anything that you boost like this is going to sound bad. Nothing in audio that you boost like this is going to sound good. So don't let your ears fool you because everything is going to sound bad. You are looking for that very specific whistle. I can't do it right now, but that whistle. You're looking for that very specific whistle sound. And when you land on it, that's what you're going to try to take away. As I sweep left and right, you're going to know when I hit this the first time over, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know when I hit it. I'm going to go all the way up to 10 and come back down and land on it. But trust me, you will know when you hit this. First off, you're listening for that whistle. And also, it's probably going to really annihilate your ears. And it will probably clip the audio as well. So here we go. I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to sweep up and down from 4 to 10 and back. Start with an S and end with an S that's sibilant. Sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Let's say things that start with an S and end. It is incredibly obvious when you land on that S. I mean, first off, you can see it, right? Because you can see it, we didn't even need to sweep, but I wanted to give you the example of sweeping, what that is like, okay? We knew when we landed on it every single time because it was ear piercing. It hurts. And it made the audio clip, as you can see down here. So you're like, okay, I'm definitely on the sibilance. And it looks like I'm pretty centered on it, right? I'm pretty dang centered when I did the magnifying glass up. So literally all we have to do now is just turn it down. That's it. We just have to turn this down. Now, how far you turn it down, that's honestly up to your ears, okay? Because you don't want to turn it down too far because you don't want to start attenuating too many frequencies surrounding this because you're really only trying to take away this whistle. And you don't want it to sound like you have a lisp and you don't want it to sound muffled. Um, but because this is such a concentrated amount of frequencies here, you can get away with turning it down more than usual. Normally, sibilance will be a wider band of frequencies because it's not most of, most people don't have a whistle in their sibilance, um, but some do. Um, so, like I said, extreme example. But now, if I play through this, in with an S that's sibilant, sibilance, sibilance, sibilant. Just like before, you listen to how much easier that is to listen to. But if we turn this off, sibilance, 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 sibilance. Sibilance, sibilance. You see how much easier that is now to digest and listen to. So literally I would be done now. All I have to do is hit apply. And then the same exact results as the last one. It's like, wow, look at that. That is, you know, so much better than it was before. All right, so those were extreme examples. Those were just two examples of how you can get rid of sibilance. There's honestly so many plugins out there that are designed to help with this. There's other methods that I use to take care of sibilance. You can find out in my audio for content creators course. But those are just two ways that I use often to get rid of sibilance. So I hope that was helpful. All right, back to the video. All right, now finally your headphones can cause you to think you have sibilance when you actually don't, or it's just nowhere near as bad as you think it is.
Now, I won't get too technical here, but just like microphones, headphones also have what's called an EQ curve or frequency response that gives them their own unique sound. For example, Beats headphones have a massive bass boost for people who like a lot of bass when listening to music. So if I were to mix my audio wearing a pair of Beats headphones, I'd likely take out a lot of bass in my audio because those headphones would trick me into thinking there's too much bass in the audio when in fact, it's just that pair of headphones that have an artificial bass boost, meaning I'd be taking away bass in my audio that really isn't there. Now, while Beats headphones was made for the pleasure of listening and not making critical mixing decisions, it's just an easy way to explain how headphones work and have their own unique sound. Now, unfortunately, there's no pair of headphones out there that have a perfect flat response, which is what we're looking for. So we just have to either get as close to flat as we can by purchasing a particular pair of headphones or just get to know the curve of your specific headphones so that you can make as accurate of an adjustment to your audio as possible. I say all of that to say there is a pair of headphones out there called the Sony MDR7506, and you've probably seen them. If you were ever in radio, you've likely come out wearing those headphones and never change to another pair ever. A lot of people fall in love with their own voice while wearing these headphones because it makes them sound nice and crispy. But then there are people like me who can't stand the way they sound because they have a massive high frequency boost right around where a lot of people's sibilance lies on the frequency spectrum, causing them to sound really harsh and painful to listen to. Because of this boost, in a lot of cases, you'll end up thinking you have really bad sibilance when in fact, it's probably nowhere near as bad as you think it is. I'll leave a link in the description below to all the headphones that I recommend and why. I really hope you guys got a lot out of this video. And if you do struggle with chronic sibilance, well, you know what they say.